So, good day to everyone. In this video, we will continue to talk about the construction of aviation AC brushed generators. Brushed means with brushes. So, uh, as you probably remember from the previous video, AC brushed generators can be of two types. So, these can be with a rotating armature and such generators typically are small generators. So here is the example of such generator, which has been shown in a previous video. And another type of uh, brushed AC generators is a AC generator with rotating field. Such generators are typically are much more powerful. So, where is the difference between these two generators and why do we have to use uh, rotating field or rotating armature? In the rotating armature generator, we have armature inside in the rotor and uh, since this armature is in the rotor, then armature windings, which carries out load currents, are connected with, with the slip rings. Yeah? Since this is the three-phase generator, then also we got three slip rings. <clears throat> the problem is that armature current, this is the load current. Load current can be very high and therefore slip rings should to be big, yeah, because they have to survive under high loads. This problem becomes much more vital if we would like to take really high powers and high currents. <clears throat> this small generator is only 7.5 kilovolt amperes. This big generator is 75 kilovolt amperes, so it is uh, 10 times more powerful. In, in this case, the slip rings will be, would be very big, very fat in order to carry out these currents uh, armature currents and therefore it's better to reverse order of the windings. In this generator we have rotating field. So what we have here? First of all <coughs> this is the synchronous generator and this is the pilot exciter. This is not a mandatory part of the generator. Yeah? So we will describe only this part. <clears throat> so, what we have here, this is the rotor, yeah. here is the cutaway view of the rotor, and this is the stator. In the rotor we have field winding, so this winding is wounded like this, around the field poles which are on the rotor. If you will be sufficiently lucky, you will see that this is the spool, yeah? So this is the spool which goes inside. We have, in this generator, we have six poles. So this generator has to rotate at the speed of 8000 RPMs in order to produce 400 Hz. The maximum speed of the generator is 9000 RPMs. Field winding, here is the wall field winding and here is the pole which is cut it out by half. Yeah? So you can see here is the field winding which is cut it out. Yeah? A lot, a lot, a lot of strands which has been cut it out. So these are wounded like this. Yeah? The cross section of the field winding can be seen from this cutaway view. Cross section is not very great. <clears throat> All spools of the field winding are connected in series. Therefore, we need only two wires to provide field current to this generator. These two wires are connected to two slip rings. Further, these two slip rings through the uh, brushes, which are removed, but here is the uh, a spring of the brush. Yeah. So, from two brushes, we can supply field current inside in the rotor. This field current, of course, is DC. 
not AC. All generators had DC supply, uh, DC field current. But look, compare these two field, uh, these two slip rings with these three slip rings. As you can see, these are almost with, of the same dimensions. This is due to the fact that here we have armature current which flows through the slip rings. But here we have field current which is much more, much more less. Yeah? Field current typically is only 5% of the armature rated current. So, <coughs> armature windings are in the stator. These are wounded again. Uh, actually, these are not wounded, these are placed in the slots. Yeah? In the slots, I can put here the camera, yeah? so you probably don't able to see, but these slots are cut here, so you can see the cross section of of the armature windings. Yeah, as you can see, the cross section is much more greater compared to field winding. This is due to the fact that armature windings carry out load currents. This is the three-phase generator. Therefore, it has a terminals. And these terminals also has uh, also have uh, at least three uh, points of contact for the A, B, and C faces. The great benefit of such construction is that terminal is directly connected with the armature winding without any slip rings. Yeah. And therefore, we do not have sparkling. We do not have problems with a fast. Um, brushes, weir, and so on. All further uh, technical solutions are similar with this small rotating armature generator. Again, since we have brushes and slip rings, then we are able to use only cooling air. Cooling air is supplied from the back by means of such like a scoop, which should be attached from here. Yeah. Further air goes through these windows, goes through the brushes and slip rings, and further it goes from this side. Yeah, very little portion of the air also goes through the rotor, through that windows, yeah. But uh, since we have a field winding inside in the rotor, then this field winding has very little current and therefore its heating is uh, really uh, much more less than we have here. Yeah. Therefore we do not have to excessively cool the rotor. The majority of heat is produced by the armature winding and therefore we have to cool uh, the stator. Therefore here is the special passage, yeah, special way for the cooling air to cool armature windings. Further, air goes through these windows and escape from the generator. Yeah. The drive shaft on this generator is also a spline drive shaft like we had on this small generator. But on this small generator, this shaft is flexible, so this is the torsion shaft. So it can be twisted a little bit during high overloads. But especially on this generator, shaft is not flexible. It means that the engine accessory gearbox should to have flexible linkage. Otherwise, this generator uh, will accept all uh, high frequency vibrations which comes from the engine accessory gearbox and these high frequency vibrations will oscillate the generator it starts to vibrate and further it can be just uh, destroyed its ball bearings can be destroyed ball bearings again we have two ball bearings yeah. the first one is uh, fully seated inside it, it is not able to move but uh, from the back it is able to move. This is required because the temperature expansion of the shaft and the rotor is greater than temperature expansion of the stator. And therefore this 
bearing will slide a little bit due to temperature expansion of the material. Again, this bearing is sealed, yeah, and this also is sealed. Again, it means that the operation time of the generator can be up to 1000, but uh, typically even much more less. Further, we have to replace both bearings because we can't lubricate them. Okay. <clears throat> this part is made of uh, is made of uh, iron because this is the magnetic conductor. Yeah. So here is the little magnet, and it attached to the iron. Okay. This pole shoe also is made of iron because again this is the magnetic conductor. Further, this magnetic conductor enters inside in the machine. Focus. Yeah. But in order to reduce weight, this outer part is made of aluminum because this outer part is required just to roll air from the back of the stator. Yeah. So this is made of aluminum, this is not a magnetic conductor. Also these parts which hold ball bearings are not made of steel, yeah. these are made of aluminum too. Only ball bearings are made of iron. And of course the dry shaft too. Yeah. Since this is the magnetic conductor and this is the magnetic conductor, both of them should to be built of uh, a laminated core plate in order to reduce AD currents. Uh, not fully the same, but uh, similar plates are shown here. So as you can see, their thickness is much more less than much more less than one millimeter, yeah, typically 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeters. This is the rotor, and the out, outward part, this is the stator. Armature windings are put in the slots, yeah, so these slots are formed by these grooves, yeah, so armature windings lies in these grooves, in these slots. Field winding is wounded like a spools, yeah, and these spools are wounded across these poles. So in this example we have six poles. So again, three pairs of poles or six poles. Yeah. The final question is what this part do? Well, in order to make a system fully self-contained, we have to take a field current from somewhere. Of course we can take it from the batteries. However, this will not make system uh, fully self-contained, because if batteries will die, then our system will not work. So the idea is to generate field current by the additional small pilot exciter. Actually, this generator, is, this generator is a really old machine and on this machine we are using DC pilot exciter. This is DC because you can see here is the collector plates, yeah? And the collector plates are only on the DC machines. So this is the DC generator. Here is the field of the DC generator and here is the armature of the DC generator which is and the armature winding is connected with the collector. Here is the collector plates, yeah. How this fasten it in the rotor. And here the brushes should to be attached. So the idea is that when engine starts to rotate our generator, this pilot exciter also will rotate and will produce DC power. This DC power is supplied to the voltage regulator. Further, current is controlled by the voltage regulator. And the voltage regulator supplies regulated current to these two slip rings. So actually, pilot exciter 
produces field current, which further is controlled, adjusted by the voltage regulator. I say that this is a real old machine because uh, uh, this uh, collector is a really weak point of um, DC machines and therefore modern generators does not use DC pilot exciters. Modern generators use PMGs or synchronous generators with permanent magnets. Finally, I would like to say that uh, brushed AC generators for today are almost not in use in aviation, especially large power brushed AC generators. That's why I am not able to show you something new, <laughs> yeah, because these are almost not in use for today. La uh, large power AC generators for today are made uh, with a much more sophisticated technique of uh, brushless solutions, yeah, without brushes. So this is the really old machine. Finally, I would like to say that its power is uh, continuous. Rated power is 75 kilovolt amperes and up to 90 kilovolt amperes during overload. And its weight is uh, around 65 kilos. So it means that uh, we got around 0.9 kilovolt ampere per each kilogram of weight. This small generator, uh, here the situation is not so good because its power is only 7.5 kilovolt amperes and the weight is around 15 kilos. So it means that we got only 0.5 volt amperes, kilovolt amperes per one kilo. So again, Bigger generators has a little bit uh, better power to weight ratio. Yeah. But for today we are using brushless solutions and these solutions are much more powerful and they have um, five times greater power to weight ratio. So, yeah. Yeah, finally, I forgot to say about this stuff. So this is the mounting flange, yeah. So this is not a modern, because modern mounting flange use quick attach detach ring, quad rings, like which are putting like this, but this is the older solutions when we have to put here bolts or we have to put here, uh, 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 connect them by means of nuts and so on, so this is not very quick solution. The generator is aligned by means of this surface. It is aligned uh, with the engine accessory gearbox. However, engine accessory gearbox is filled with engine oil. But our generator has slip rings and these slip rings should to be clean from the uh, contamination, any contaminations from the lubricants. Therefore, if the engine accessory gearbox seals will break, then oil will go here, and it is possible that oil will also go inside in the generator. In order to prevent this situation, here is the, this part. This part has labyrinth. The direction of rotation of this generator, and also of that generator, is in a counterclockwise direction if we are looking from the drive shaft side. So, when this shaft rotates, this piece also will rotate, and as you can see, it has a twist. It means that when it will rotate in this direction, if any oil will go here, then through this twist, it will be left from the generator. Yeah. So this is the main idea. So this is a seal. It doesn't provide any sealing with respect to the air, but it's very, really good for the lubricants, for the liquids. Yeah? So this is the little joke how to make the generator oil proof. Yeah. So okay, thanks for watching.